It's that time of the week when we bring to your living rooms top security and crime stories that made headlines during the week. The program is Crime Watch. On our lineup, one of our very vibrant journalists uh, has been caught shot in his prime with the aged father, uh, uh, two kids. The journalist, famous Joe Barrow, is assassinated in Bayelsa State. Arrest and eventual death of a notorious militant responsible for the death of six in Ikorodu, Lagos. Exchange of gunfire between the Nigerian army and the police in Damatru, Yobe State Capital. Hello and welcome. I'm Ivy Kano. It was indeed a sad day for journalism in Bayelsa State as gunmen suspected to be hired killers on Sunday shot and killed an employee of Glory FM 97.1, the state radio corporation famous Joe Barrow. The Bayelsa State Police Command has promised to apprehend the killers, gunmen and bring them to justice. In an interview with TVC News at the scene of the crime, Police Commissioner Asopo Amba said his men are on the trail of the killers of Yeteme George reports. Number 54 Einek Road, Yenagoa, looks like a ghost yard, and while people in the neighborhood politely declined to make comments, a young man gave an insight into how the suspects used a ladder to gain entrance into the compound from the perimeter fence at about five on Sunday morning. Me and my elder brother and my senior brother, as we did inside, then try to then use the, this their big armor, hit the door two times, the door opened, so my elder brother run enter the, the toilet. Me, I can't run enter the, we see say, I see say our weights no reach again. So I can't run enter the wardrobe. So from the, from the door, they can't start the shoot, shoot on the shoot them. So I think come fall and still shoot them again. Come they ask say, where the money day? So you can like they say, money no day, money no day. They can't still bullet them again from there. They come parlor, carry my elder brother phone. All of them come come out before we can later see policemen for the compound. Do you think it was a case of assassination or armed robbery? I don't really know. The Bayelsa State Police Commissioner, Asukwa Amba, and top officers of the command arrived the area and immediately started combing the neighborhood for clues that will lead to the arrest of the killers of famous Gyobaro, a native of Otuedu in Ogbea Council area of the state. It's quite an unfortunate incident, but however, I can assure the generality of the public that we we would definitely get the gang involved. You can see the seriousness attached. I have with me here the DC of the AC State CID and other people. It's just that the I wouldn't want to divulge any information on this, but I can assure you that we've had one or two persons under our custody, most especially because I believe they use a small kid after cutting through the the burglary, they used a small child to pass in and open the door and before they perpetrated their act. We've, we've had one of, there are three small boys we are, underage boys they are using that we are suspecting. We've got one of them and he's giving, he's giving the police very useful information to that. Holes in the floor and on the door suggest that more than seven bullets were fired by the unidentified gunmen whose mission is not yet clear since nothing was taken from the apartment. It's a sad one to the NUJ family in Bayasa State because uh, one of our very vibrant journalists uh, has been caught shot in his prime. With the aged father, uh, uh, two kids and the other siblings that look up to him. Now the life wire of their source of livelihood has been cut short. I think this one is a premeditated murder. And also, I also learned he had also complained of uh, an attempt on his life last week before this unfortunate incident happened on Sunday. We want the police in the states to rise up to the occasion and bring these perpetrators to book. Police Commissioner Asukwo Amba left the scene with a promise that the fleeing gunmen will be arrested. May his soul rest in perfect peace. We pray that the police fishes out the killers of famous 
And now to Yobe State, last Wednesday, three security personnel were reported dead in a shootout between the army and the police over the adoption of the squadron commander of the 41 Police Mobile Force, CSP Dauda Fika, by some soldiers in Damaturu, the Yobe State capital. TVC News correspondent Mike Loshoma reports that Damaturu was thrown into confusion during the exchange of gunfire between the two security agencies. Since those days when Boko Haram fighters unleashed terror on residents of Yobe State, the people had not witnessed what happened on Wednesday morning. Residents of Damaturu woke up to the sounds of gunshots. Pandemonium reigned in the state capital as the army and police clashed, leaving at least three persons dead. Major streets were deserted as commercial activities were also grounded in response to the sporadic gunshots. In the heat of the clash, TVC crew got access to Commissioner of Police, Simonu Abdul Malik, who confirmed to TVC News that some people in military uniform abducted Daud Fika, the squadron commander of 41 Police Mobile Force, Damaturu. I had some gunshots from the presidential lodge area. I contacted my lieutenants on ground to know what was happening. Because of our experience here, it could be insurgents, it could be anything. They told me that um, some men seen in military uniform stormed the home of my squadron commander, CSP Nasiru Fika, and abducted him. From on that basis, I got in touch with his two IC, who told me, yes, they have heard that. The presidential lodge where he stays is the base for the JTF, where all commanders that are on the field are staying. I was able to get in touch with the brigade commander, I was able to get in touch with the Oro commander, and we conducted um, a search, we organized a search party. We now knew that uh, it's confirmed the military came. According to him, Fika was later released after being shot in his left leg. An emergency meeting was called by the state government to find a lasting solution to the reoccurring clashes between the two security agencies. After the meeting, Brigadier General Aminu Bandi, the commanding officer of the army unit in Boniyadi, assured the public that the culprit will be brought to book. I want to assure you that the officer has also been arrested. Just in the manner of the military, we are going to set board of inquiry, we are going to set military police investigation. If it warrant sending the officer for the court martial, he will go. There are going to be investigation on the police, investigation on the army, and go going to be a joint investigation to address this issue so that it doesn't happen again. This is not the first time the army and police will be involved in exchange of gunfire. Resident of UB State are of the opinion that if a lasting solution is not found to the apparent disunity, among security agencies, Boko Haram insurgents might take advantage of the situation to invade the city. I hope that is sorted out quickly before it degenerates. And now we move to Imo State, where three suspected fake military men have been arrested. The suspects were arrested at Amako here, Ubi, in Owere West local government area of the state for allegedly defrauding people on the pretext of enlisting them into the Nigerian army. They were alleged to have opened an office in Owere and mandated their victims to part with huge sum of money for medical and recruitment exercise. Our correspondent Saturday Ochias report is presented from our studio. The hall of the Nigerian Police Command in Owiri was filled to capacity as journalists from different media houses came in large numbers to have a glimpse of the new Commissioner of Police, CP Chris Ezike. At his median press briefing, the CP, without wasting time, thanked the PEN profession for working in harmony with the previous police commissioner in the state. The CP, who quickly reeled out his agenda before the journalists, also requested for their cooperation in nipping crimes in the board in the state. I intend to explore the prospects and the experiences of these assignments which I have done in the past 
to bring about good policing services, along with my management and the entire workforce of the command to the people of Imo State. Not done yet, the commissioner of police, along with all the senior officers and journalists, moved to the command playground where suspected criminals were paraded for various offenses. CPA ZK quickly drew the attention of the journalists to three fake soldiers who had been collecting money from people on grounds of enlisting them into the Nigerian army. The suspects, when queried on how they got the army uniform, said it belonged to their father, who was a soldier. CP EZK, however, used the opportunity to plead with Imus citizens and residents to go about their normal businesses without fear of molestation. You know, I tell people it's usually better to find out on the websites of some of these security agencies where they post time and venue of recruitment instead of falling victims to some of these criminal elements. And in our state, Nigerians have been enjoined to conduct in-depth profiling of domestic staff with the police before engaging their services. This, the cops believe, would cop crime rate. Abiodun Udura, who is the commissioner of police in Oyo State, gave this advice while parading 27 suspects at the police command. Correspondent Ulutai of Femosco has more. They lack patience and perseverance. Their hunger for instant wealth has pitched them against cops who ought to be friends with them. This notorious gang specializes in car snatching. They made Ibadi on that dwelling place before moving to neighboring states to steal. Ola Shenibakari bought five cars at a giveaway price, but he says he was unaware that the vehicles were stolen. The story of Afola Bishodikpe is quite pathetic, having betrayed his family members. The young man in desperation for wealth personally led his gang to his sister's house to rob her. The victim narrates our ordeal in the hands of a family member. They came into the kitchen. My, my daughter was okay. looking at the kitchen. Okay. 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 So they see that opportunity to enter the house. When they enter the house, they order the door. They ask us to face down. They ask for the key of the motion. I told them, let me go and bring it to you. They said, they will go to the bedroom and take it. Sorry. They went inside. When they went inside, they are armed. Yes, sir. They are armed. When they went inside, they took the key to the Camry, jewelries, laptop, phones. This is camera and other 25-year-old Matthew Kujo is full of regrets. This Beninois chef has betrayed the trust and confidence reposed in him by his master, who he had over time stolen about $58,000 from. Not done, the chef also made away with 3 million naira stashed in his employer's Ecolaba home in Ibadan. The young man went ahead to build for himself a house in his native country, Benin Republic, and was on his way to the United States when he was nabbed. He was caught with 1.5 million naira cash. Now he has nowhere to hide. The police say crime committed by the like of Matthew has to be checked, and they mentioned how. Yes, we are we plenty. So as your government to go for other people they are going to ask them to go Where is the house? They call them. So what do you intend to do with all this money? Nothing. When you tell us money, what you have done. When you took the money, you run away. No, I'm not running. Tell tell let them know what you what and what you have done with the money. Tell them where you built your house. As I tell you, when you bring the house. So where were you planning to escape to before you were arrested? Tell them. I'm planning to go abroad. 
The police say crime committed by the like of Matthew has to be checked, and they mentioned how. But what we want to stress is that for members of the public, please tell them if they are going to recruit any domestic staff, either a, a cook, a driver, or anybody that is going to work closely with them, they should bring them to the police for profiling. The police has what we call central criminal registry. They will be able to check if he has any criminal record and um, they will be able to take appropriate precaution. In fact, they can register such person with the police as a deterrent. A total of 27 suspects were paraded here in LALA. 11 vehicles were also on display. Cops here charge Nigerians to be more vigilant and report any unusual movements to them in good time. Now to one of our top stories. One of the notorious militants responsible for the killing of four police officers, one soldier and a civilian in the Kurudu area of Lagos has lost his life. According to reports, after several days of intensive follow-up by the intelligence response team deployed to Lagos State by Inspector General of Police Ibrahim Idris, finally made a headway on Sunday when one of the kingpins, Endurance Ominisha, aka Mighty, native of Arobo in Ondo State, came out from the creeks to visit his girlfriend in a house he rented for her at number 20 Jewel Adebolu Street, Ibeshe. The team immediately swooped on him and surrounded the house. On sighting the special IRT team, the kidnapper escaped to the roof of the house from where he fired several shots with his pistol on the team, who swiftly returned fire for fire and fatally wounded the kidnapper who was on the roof of the house. Injured kidnapper was eventually brought down from the roof of the house and rushed to General Hospital Ikorodu, where he later died. But before his death, he mentioned one American, Stone, Vika, and others as his gang members, who also participated in the killing and also confessed to the kidnapping of Oniba of Iba land. Turkish school girls kidnap and many other kidnappings in Lagos and Ogun State. The police are working hard to arrest other mentioned gang members. A good one there by the police. Now to some good news. Henceforth, no police officer has a right to detain anyone for more than 24 hours. Deputy Inspector General of Police Folusho Adebayo gave this order when he met with the officers and main of the Lagos Police Command. Since the Inspector General of Police has considered it necessary and auspicious at this time to direct that the DIGs should go to their respective geopolitical um, zone with a view to appraising security and crime situation, and of course, interact with important stakeholders so that the DIG will have something to take back. The DIG will know where Alex are pinning us, and of course, from the situation reports that have been read in the headquarters, the DIG will be able to identify those areas where we are still lagging behind and that hopefully all will form part of the DIG's note to the Inspector General of Police so that first headquarters will know where we have gaps and those things that are necessary to fill the gaps. Lagos State Command has grown from what it used to be from inception. And as of today, apart from the administrative setup in the headquarters here, we have 13 area commands. That's perhaps 
um, the largest in the country. We also have 107 police divisions. That would be about five states combined together. And of course, um, our staff strength is close to about 30, 31,000 personnel. It appears large, but we still yearn for more because the demands for our services increases by the day. We are very, very lucky in Lagos State because Lagos is the port party for everything. Just as Lagos is small in size, but it happens to be about the most populated in this country, um, outside Kano. Our position in um, the uh, geographical location as well make Lagos State command to be that state that um, is the gateway to everything economic in Nigeria and somehow the West Africa. We have our goods, we have the bad, and we have the ugly. But I want to report to the Deputy Inspector General of Police, sir, that with the guidance and the leadership being provided from first headquarters, the coordination being given by the Office of the Assistant Inspector General of, of Police Zone 2, and of course, the unprecedented dedication, bravery, and loyalty of the officers and men of this command. <laughs> Lagos State has been relatively peaceful. The police high command are frowns at human rights abuses. We will not condemn any abuse of human rights of Nigerians. We will not condone impunity from any officer. We have to work together with the people. That's why we have the Eminem People's Forum and other stakeholders. We can change. We don't want to be static. We don't mind any criticism that is fair. We look at it and I want to assure you that uh, we are not opposed to anybody criticizing us. Detention of suspects must not be more than 24 hours, except in cases of kidnappings, armed robbery, and other heinous crimes. We don't want to be sued by anybody. We must ensure that anybody, any suspect is released between 24 hours, except in serious cases, like I said. We don't want anybody that you think is not fit, either because of one thing or the other. Don't give such persons arms. You must be able to watch all your officers so that you know who to entrust with arms because uh, of the consequences. There is no doubt that uh, we are understaffed. When you hear the population of uh, officers in Lagos State, when you hear about 30,000, you normally think it's a lot. If you look at it, it's a lot. But when you look at the commitments, the challenges, because I know an average police officer works a minimum of about 16 hours a day. And the CP, <coughs> if any CP sleeps before 2 a.m., that means it's not working hard. Because we have been there, we know that uh, we hardly get out four hours of sleep every day. So I want to commend all of you. I know you are not doing any eight hours here. Minimum here in Lagos and other places is about 16 hours. The government of President Buhari has decided to employ 10,000 more men 
As you all know, we have 10,000 officers and men at the various police colleges. We will begin another round of uh, recruitment very, very soon. So between now and next year, we will have like uh, 20,000. So the government is doing everything possible to ensure that uh, we have enough officers and men. For the benefit, I don't know whether some of those uh, that are making that uh, army, we have promoted 28,627 inspectors and rank and file within this short period. Also, we have also promoted 4,410 ASBs and above. And the total number of promotees within this short time is about 33,037 officers and men that have been promoted. I think we need a Round of applause for the IGP. The Inspector General of Police and the management team are also negotiating with credible developers to build houses, affordable housing for all officers and men. Those of you that don't have houses, I want to assure you that very soon you are all going to get affordable houses for each and every one of you. Also, efforts have been made to strengthen the medical benefits and the insurance so that everybody can benefit very well. And that's a wrap on this edition of Crime Watch. Join us next week for another interesting episode. Do send your comments to Crime Watch at tvcnews.tv. I'm Ivy Kano. Do have a crime-free week. Thank <laughs> you.